Welcome back to Mike's Workshop Adventures. I'm Mike. I'd really like to thank you guys for watching, subscribing and commenting on the videos I do. I really appreciate it. Uh, today we're going to work at the table store and we're going to be going over what I'd consider one of the um, best table store accessories that every table store should have. I used to have a really big sled on this table. Uh, it was way too big. It was actually the full size of the table and it was way too big. It was too hard to use, too heavy. Um, and when you pulled it out, it used to when you pulled it out, it used to overbalance. So then I made a support leg for it. it fits on here, it sits under the floor, and it just took away any worry about it tipping. Now I've made a new sled another one, which is just a single sided sled, I find this great, which also works very well with this. But as you can see, as you pull it out, you don't have it drop. You don't have this issue of it falling off on you. And you drop it out. So it sits there. Really simple, really effective, one of the best things I use. It's great when you want to cut a large panel, so you can actually pull back if you have the panel out, you can go through your saw. Also, fantastic, if I'm cutting large pieces of ply, I can drop the ply down and I've got a, an extra structure to hold it from tipping. Now today I thought I'd even make a longer one, because I've got this one which I use all the time. I would nearly use this every day on my table saw. Um, so we'll make another one out of the same product, probably slightly different structure, and it will be foldable the same as this. This being able to fold up, it just goes under the, under the table saw, out of the way when I'm not using it. It's got an adjustable foot, but I don't think I'll do that on the next one. I'll be able to cut it directly to sit on the floor. All right, let's start doing that. I had my hand operated on on Monday. I had a, um, a trigger finger on this hand released where they operate, they cut it. So I'm just going to be wearing a glove to give it a bit of protection. As you can see, I'm, I'm actually using the little support. Because I'm going to be sliding sheets through, I'm going to make the top 120mm wide, so it'll be just slightly wider than this one. If I set that to yeah, 120, and I'll cut some sides after I cut. So I'm going to make the table 1200 long. It's going to be much longer than this one. This one is 560, great length for the. I will keep this one here for the um, the sled. But if I'm doing some really big sheets on the table saw, so I'll be able to use the other one. I'll probably actually use them both, because they'll give me support. So So I'm going to trim these two sides down first, which I'm going to make out of my 70mm pieces, and they're 97, sorry, 87, 87 shorter than, this, than, the, than the top piece. So I'll whip 87 off them. Okay, let's screw the sides and the top together. So I'm going to stand up my two sides. 
and then I'm going to put my top on, I'll glue it, screw it every 200 mils. I always use PVA glue. Don't have to, but I just like the joints to have a bit of glue in them. Even on um, accessories and jigs and bits and pieces, I tend to always glue them. Makes them that little bit stronger. Okay, screwed together, Just wipe the glue out, I'll go cut an end piece, we'll screw that on, then we'll make the, um, the leg, the leg is just going to be a T out of two of these pieces. the leg for the new one and this one has a an adjustable foot on it. No I'm not going to put that on the on the I'm not going to put that on the new one I'm going to make. I'm just going to cut it directly to the level of the floor. So I need to check the height between the top of this or the top of my top of my saw and the floor. And I'm just going to use my level for that. I'm not actually looking at the level I'm just using it as a straight edge. So I'm going to cut it, this is 800, 893, I'm actually going to go 892, I'd rather this was slightly lower so it doesn't lift. So, I'm just going to give you a little idea of the difference I'm going to make of the two um, legs I'm going to make for these. This one is just a solid piece of <coughs> pine. I'll just take it out to show you how it works. So it's just a, a square piece of stock. I've rounded the end over and that's so when it pivots on the bolt, if it was square, when it pivots up, it would just jam that edge against the back and it, it wouldn't lift. So by rounding it, it will pivot up and then the back of this sits flush with the side of the, uh, with the inside of that. So it will come up like that. So it's as you can see, as that spins around, 
this edge will go up and then it will sit flush so this will be supported on the back of that now I've used a nylock nut now nylock nut <coughs> has a nylock nut has a little nylon insert in it and that insert when you wind when you wind when you wind the nut in it cuts into the insert and then it won't move it's a tightening locking device it's called nylock or that's what we call it in New Zealand and, I, and the reason I use that I'll put, I'll put this back together and I'll show you the reason I use that see I've hit that nylock now now since I've already tightened it once or twice it's it's actually created a thread in the nylon the first time you do them up are a lot tighter and you can see it has resistance in it as I tighten it now I don't want this to be over floppy and if I tighten it too tight I'll just tighten it up it's tight it's too tight so once I've tightened up tight I'm just going to loosen it quarter half a turn and it will make it loose with a normal nut that is now loose and it will slowly work its way off with a nylock with the nylon it won't it'll just stay there so really great for that sort of thing so at the moment I've got a bit of movement and that nut because that nut is loosish on there so that's why I use a nylock <clears throat> this leg is going to be slightly different I'm going to have two pieces I'm going to put this down the back of it and I will screw it in and that will give it the strength so it won't buckle so I have rounded off the ends here so these are the two ends that when together will come up against the floor I just like round it's just rounded off it's tidied them up makes them look a bit nicer okay so now we'll screw this together so when I screw this in, I'm going to put the screws to the back of the hole in, in the hinge and that way the head of the countersunk screw will actually push the, the hinge tight against this which will then keep it tight against the back of the um, this inner, inner part of this leg so if I went to the front it would pull it away which I don't want so I want it to push back so when I start the screw I'm going to start it more to the back of the hole than anywhere and also when I do the hinge into the leg once again I will do it so it pulls it down tight So I've screwed the hinge in, nice fit, and when it comes up, it just, because of that pressure, just locks in there nice. So it's nice and tight for, for the leg to sit against the ground. Fantastic. Beautiful. Right, so what we'll do now is I'll just turn this around. So on this end, I need to make up a piece like this that slots into the aluminium of the table saw. I've used a piece of hardwood here 
I find that because it's so small and if we use a piece of this cuss this chipboardy stuff or plywood it just doesn't last so that's why I go for a piece of piece of timber there because it will um, just last better it won't break up and you can screw into it so let's go mark that and we'll cut that this is the area where this piece drops into to hold it in place um, so I've got a mark to get these angles I'm just going to take off the other end I'll just take off this little piece of plastic and I can use that to scribe I could also just hold a piece of timber up against that and scribe it if I had a circular pipe which some saws have I'd just cut a notch so it slips over you just have to adjust that to your particular saw. And I'm not going to cut that curve. I'm just going to create that angle from the other side across here. Let's see what that angle is. Nine degrees. Go and set my table saw to nine degrees and I'll cut that there at nine degrees and then just on that other side at nine degrees. So I'll create that piece which will slot nicely down into that um, into that aluminium recess. So let's go. I've set my blade at nine degrees. I'm going to cut up these two edges. Now, because this is a longer, narrower piece of timber, and it, I, I don't like holding this close to the blade and it can move. So I'm going to just set it over there. And then I take another piece and I sit it on here and I can apply pressure. And that really holds it well. And it also keeps my hands away. Piece of old timber, there's a nail in it, great, my blade loves that. Okay, I've cut that off, fits beautifully. So now, I'll just take off my sharp edges and then we'll mount it up, and then we'll just give everything a good sand up. Okay, I've got my block sitting in here, fits really well. So now I'm going to sit my leg, my support, on top of it. Actually put a bit of glue on there first. clamp it down because I want to now square it up
Okay. So I've got to sand this up now. I'll sand it up and then I'll give it a clear coat of water-based polyurethane. I'll probably give it three or four. So as you can see it folds up, I can put it away. It's on, nice and support. Now, I'm sure if I have a lot of big ply to cut, I'll get this one and I'll get this one out. Day to day use, I'm sure I'll stick with this one. It's just it's, it's smaller, it's all I actually need. But if I have a big job, I'll swap over to this one. So I'm sure this will get stored away and come out occasionally. Thanks for spending your time in the workshop with me today. I really appreciate it. I really recommend that you make one of these for your own table saw. They are fantastic. Makes life really easy and so much safer. I would start off with the smaller one. I use this all the time. The bigger one I made, I made it bigger because I already had the smaller one and I will use the bigger one when I need it for bigger projects. But I really recommend starting off with the smaller one. This is about 550 long. That other one was 1200 long, so that considerably different. I appreciate your subscriptions, your comments, your thumbs up. Really is enjoyable doing this. So thanks very much, and I'll see you on the next one.